Okay, students, today I'm going to go through the solutions for the quiz that was released last Friday, the 17th of April. Please make sure you have done the quiz and key in your answers on SLS and make sure that you have your uh, workings with you right now. Let's look at the first question. A number when divided by 8 gives a quotient of 13 and a remainder of 6. So again, I'm going to highlight the keywords. We have been through such a question before. When divided by 8, gives a quotient of 13 and a remainder of 6. Okay, find this number. Now the number over here and the number over here are referring to the same thing. Okay, you need to remember what these uh, numbers are called. So we're going to talk about this. Now 13 is the quotient, 6 is the remainder, but what about the other two numbers? Okay, now 8 is the divisor. Okay, 8 is the divisor. The number here and the number here are referring to the dividend, the same number. Okay, the dividend. Okay, I've done this uh, question before, so I'll, I'll just go through again. That This means that when the dividend divides by 8, you will get a quotient of 13, and then when you work it out, work it out, you get a remainder of 6. I already went through a method before, and I show you the formula for, um, for, for how to do this. You will understand that actually the dividend is equals to the quotient multiplied by the divisor. plus, okay, the remainder. Okay, so the dividend is the unknown. Okay, so we do not know what's the dividend. So the quotient is 13, divisor is 8, and the remainder is 6. Okay, so you should be able to get the answer. You have to work out what's in the brackets first, and then you add 6. Okay, the answer you should get is one one zero. You have to work. You have to really work this part out, uh. I'm not going to do this for you, but you really have to work out what is thirteen times eight plus six. But once you work it out, you find that the answer is one one zero. Okay, let's move on. Now a box can only hold six tennis balls. Okay only hold six tennis balls. That means the maximum number of tennis balls you can hold is six. It can also hold five, four, three, two, one, or even none. Okay, so the maximum number of tennis balls you can hold is six. Kairun buys 74 tennis balls is a given total. What is the minimum number of boxes he would need? Now, of course, if he has 74 tennis balls, he can also have 74 boxes, but why would anyone do that? Okay, because um, that will waste a lot of money. So we're trying to find the least number of boxes he would need. Again, if I want to do this the long way, I can just draw out one box and just, you know, draw six tennis balls inside. Draw another box, draw six tennis balls inside and repeat this until we have 74 tennis balls. But this will take a lot of time. So actually, if you think about this, the question is really asking you, how many groups of six do I have? You know, because a group of six is actually a box that is full, okay? A group of six is actually a box that is full that can only hold six tennis balls, okay? So we have to do this by taking 74, the total, divided by six. There will definitely be a remainder because 74 is not in the multiplication table of six. So we take 74, divide by six, okay? You get one here, okay? Then you bring down the four. Okay, then 2 minus 12, remainder 2. So you get 12, remainder 2. Now remember, this 12 over here is talking about 12 complete groups of 6. I repeat, it's 12 complete groups of 6. means that there are 12 boxes that have a total of 6 balls in each box. Much like what we have over here, okay, on top. Okay, but what about this one over here? This one needs to fit into another box, correct? because you can't just have two tennis balls lying around. Okay, so actually we need 12 boxes plus an extra box, 
and we get 13 boxes in total. Okay. Now the third question, this one is uh, actually a, a similar question to, in the, to the heuristics. I, I just basically uh, changed the numbers. Now Lisa made 592 cookies for a party. This is a given, a given uh, total. Okay, she made three times as many chocolate cookies as strawberry cookies. Now there are two variables here. First question you've got to ask yourself is, between the chocolate and the strawberry cookies, which one has more? And based on the, the first two lines, we know that there are more chocolate cookies than strawberry cookies. In fact, the total number of chocolate cookies is three times the number of strawberry cookies. Okay, so we're going to do part A and part B separately. Okay. Now for part A, okay, we have to draw a model. Okay, we know that the chocolate cookies is three times. Okay, sorry, yeah, this is not done properly. Let me draw it nicely a bit. Okay, remember always make sure that your models are drawn as accurately as possible. Okay, yes. Okay, so chocolate cookies three times. Strawberry cookies, okay, one one unit. You have to label them one unit, one unit each. And the total, five hundred ninety-two. Okay. So the the method you got to do is this, ah. Uh, I, I'm going to repeat this. Huh? You're going to have to write 4u equals 592 because there are 400, sorry, there are 4 units in total. So 1u equals to 592 divided by 4. Okay? You should get 148. You have to do the workings. Okay? I, I've already done the workings. That's why I can write out the answer. But you have to do the workings. So now number of strawberry cookies is actually 1 unit. So this is the answer for part A. Now for part B, okay, chocolate cookies is three units. So if one unit equals to one four eight, you have to write down all these. Uh, I insist on all these uh, workings. Don't be, uh, don't be, don't take the shortcut. Okay. So chocolate cookies is three units. Is actually one four eight times three, which is four four four. Now, is there a faster way to do this? The answer is yes. Another method, method you can do is to notice that actually the chocolate cookies is 592 minus 1 unit, which is equal to 592 minus 148, and you should still get the same answer. Okay, these are two methods. Method 1, this is method 1, this is method 2. Both methods are correct, and I think that the second method is easier because some of you are better at subtraction than multiplication. Okay, let's move on. Now, Ken had four times as much money as Jim. Jim had $300. How much more money did Ken have than Jim? Okay, now for this one, you have to draw a model. Okay, Ken has four times as much money as Jim. Ken, Jim. Again, when you have a unitary method, you have to use the, you have to label as one unit. Jim had $300. How much more? Okay, keyword is more. There's a question mark over here. The keyword is more. Okay, so you got to find the unknown difference. Okay, in this case, there are many ways to do it, but you have to notice that actually if one unit is $300, the difference is 3 units, so that is 300 times 3, which is $900, okay? Some of you will find 4 units and then minus 1 unit. That will take very long. It's not, it's not incorrect, but it's just a longer way. But if you draw the model, you'll notice the, the answer is actually just 3 units, okay? Let's move on. Okay, Amanda has 4 times as many hair clips as Jenny. Amanda has... 135 fewer hair clips than Susan. How many hair clips does Jenny have if Susan has 30, 375 hair clips? There are three variables here. There's Amanda, there's Jenny, and there's Susan. Okay, so how do you do this? You have to draw one at a time. Okay, so first the easiest one is Amanda and, Su Amanda and Jenny. The first one is Amanda and Jenny. You will notice 
Amanda has four times as many, okay? So Amanda, I draw in the center. And you'll see why later. Amanda has four times as many hair clips as Jenny. Okay, Amanda, Jenny. You have to now label one unit each, huh? Okay. Amanda has... Now, there's another person called Susan now. Amanda has 135 fewer hair clips than Susan. So now Susan has a bar over here, which is more than Amanda. This is Susan, huh? Susan has 135 more than Amanda. And you also have to separate the remaining bar into four equal parts. And you have to label. If you don't label, you'll be very confused. Okay, if not, the 135 will look like the other bar. So you have to actually label one U for all the units that are the same. And you've got to put the extra 135. So now over here, the last part, how many hair clips does Jenny have? So this is the unknown. If Susan has 375. Okay. Okay, so this is a two-step problem. Okay, so I'm going to write the workings here. First one, you've got to find four units. Okay, four units equals to three seven five minus one three five. Okay, so you should get two four zero. So now Jenny is one unit, two four zero divide by four, you get sixty. Okay, so Jenny has sixty hair clips. Okay, now to the final question. This one I came out with it myself. It's something similar to what you've done before, but I made it a real, a real world problem. Now, a minibus can carry nine passengers. Remember, this is nine passengers maximum. So can it? Can the bus hold less than nine? Can no problem. It can even be an empty bus, but that will be a waste of money. Now, four teachers, twenty-three male students, and thirty-one female students are going on an excursion. I wrote all this out to confuse the students. Okay, but actually at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if it's a teacher, student, male or female, it's still a passenger. So you just have to find the total. Okay? What is the minimum number of buses needed? Well, okay, I'm gonna just do the workings uh, for the first step, which is to find the total number of passengers. Okay, you will notice that the total number of passengers is four plus twenty-three plus thirty-one, which is fifty-eight. So you can use mental sum. We can have 58 buses, no problem. It's possible if, if we have a lot of money, but we, we don't want to do that. Okay, so we have to find us the least number of buses that we need. Now assume that we do not need a teacher on each bus because if we need a teacher on each bus, then we don't really have enough teachers to go around. So let's assume that we can distribute the passengers equally and maybe some buses have more males than females or more females than males or maybe one bus has all the teachers inside it doesn't matter we're just solving this in a simple way so this one we got to actually take 58 the number of students divided by nine okay and actually if you work it out we get six remainder four i really want to explain what these numbers mean huh? six is actually the number of full buses that means sorry full mini buses Okay, full minibuses. That means on six of the minibuses, there are a total of nine passengers in each bus. This is the leftover or the extra, extra um, passengers. So what are they going to do? Are they going to take a bus? Are they going to walk there? Are they going to cycle there? No, they have to, we have to get another bus for them, right? We have to take another minibus for them. So actually, we need one more. So it's six full buses plus one extra bus with only four passengers inside. So we get a total of seven buses. Okay? Thank you.